I mean, throughout your book, I've, I've obviously I've done some highlighting. <laughs> um, you, you know, one thing that struck me right away during um, the, actually, well, it was during the how to use this book, how to get the most from this book. Yeah. Um, you know, and this could maybe go forth to any manager watching this because this was something, I mean, I'm a good one to two books a week um, that I read. And yeah. where you said, I'd have a highlighter on hand for the printed version or make, you know, use of that whole highlight thing in sure. Kindle. Kindle. But I love this where you said, when, once you complete the book, immediately go back and begin reading only the highlighted portions again. This yeah. has proven to greatly enhance your retention. Once you've finished the highlighted portions, immediately go to your smartphone, create a reminder, and, yeah. and go back a month into the future. And, you know, I, I love that because every one of my book has these little tabby things, and as I go through them, it gets hundreds and hundreds of tabbies, um, little check marks, rabbit ears, highlights, you know, the whole works. A lot, sure. of people, a lot of people think I massacre books as I read them, but... Um, no, you, know, you, optimi you optimize the book. <laughs> that is a bit, I'm going to use that one, actually. I optimize the book. <laughs> so right. when it comes to being a manager, being a leader, um, is it, can we then, say, take books like yours, highlight them, and maybe even provide our team with educational pieces of content? Is that something that you, like, what are some, st some strategies you give to managers to really get their, your team engaged? Yeah, I have uh, to really get the team engaged is one thing that has really made me. And when I say millions, I mean that uh, we did eight million in business last year. Our goal for this year is 10 million. Uh, but when I when I tell you that, I'm, I'm you know, I can show you the P&L. So that's not an issue. It's not a pipe dream. Uh, the one principle that I'm getting ready to share with you is in the book. And it's actually the second of the seven principles in this education. And education is not like, OK, we're going to pay for you to go to night classes and all that. That's great. That's not what I'm talking about. What I do, and I've been doing for a long, long time, and I talk about it in the book, is I've been buying books that I enjoy, that I get a lot from. I buy, I have 40 employees right now, with a few more coming on in a couple of weeks. Um, I buy all of them a copy of the book, give them highlighters, give them a notebook, and I say, I split the company up into two, roughly 20 people at Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, and uh, the other 20 at Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. And they're required to come in there with their notes, not coming in with just like you've got highlighted in the book. Oh, no, not good enough. I want them to put it on a sheet of paper that they can put in a notebook. And here's the method to my madness on that is when they have that notebook, they can have like 50 to 100 to a, you know, two or 300 books in a binder, depending on the binder. And they can go through there and, and, base, and basically reread a book from their notes in a matter of 15, 20 minutes. And they get all the strong points that you've got highlighted. You follow me? Yeah. So what I do is I, I, I pay all my people to be in that room. It costs me about a hundred grand a year conservatively. And that does not include opportunity costs if my people were actually on the phone selling or, you know, taking care of our clients. So, but it's well worth it. When I say that hundred thousands, maybe several million dollars, that's very conservative. And what I do, in essence, is this bonds us together as a team. And that's what you ask about. Uh, when we read these chapters and we all have different notes, when we all read the exact same thing, Dan, we all have different lives, different pasts that impact our current life, our present day life. So when we read those books, we think about it. Somebody will come in and say, my Uncle Tom did that. You know, he made that mistake. Or, you know, my Aunt, my Aunt Joan did this. And, you know, she went bankrupt and. All these stories, and you know, I've, I've shared my story with people how I lost everything and had to move back home with my mom and dad, and my wife and three kids in tow, and into a 1,340 square foot house that was 25 years ago next month. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm immensely blessed, but I, you know, I, I know what it means to be to struggle, and I know what it means to be wealthy. I'll take the last one. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But I want my people to understand and I value them understanding. My clients value my people getting more understanding about the world and how they can be a better employee, a better spouse, a better friend, a better, you know, uh, employee to the company. Because if your employees are happy, for example, right now we're reading a book on personal uh, finance. 
and all our employees are reading it and we're discussing it and we're showing them how to pay their bills off in five to seven years, if they get a better handle on the money, they don't have as much stress, do they, Dan? No. Well, you know as well as I do, out of my 40 employees, I've got some of them that are extremely good at managing money, and I've got some that aren't. I've got some that have plenty of month left over at the end of their money, and I have some that have plenty of money left over at the end of their month. Did you get that distinguished difference? Yeah. You know, if you don't manage your money, you're going to be hurt. You're going to be going to relatives. You're going to be coming to old Dave and saying, Dave, would it be, can I get an advance? Let me give you a little statistic. Out of all my 25 years, and I've been managing people about 35 years, including the time before I started my company, every one of the employees that have to come to me on a habitual basis and ask to borrow money end up stealing from me, Dan, really? without exception. Without exception. Hmm. And I'm talking a long time. i got a long track record. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But the time that we spend in the, in the book clubs, what we call book clubs, it bonds us together as a group. We've had people... Uh, who tear up. I'm, hey, <laughs> I teared up one time talking about my father who passed away last year. When you can, when you can, you don't want to go out and, okay, let's all go cry. That's not what I'm talking about. But when you're relating to people, you know, one girl recently was talking about her mother, that she was addicted to drugs, that she was basically having to support her mother. Her mother lived in another state, but she was working and she was sending her mother money every month. Because her, mon her mother is an addict, and you know she's struggling. And my one of my employees, she does not want her mother to live in a shelter or homeless. But she enables her. So we've had the conversation. You know, I want to have the relationship with my people. And some managers stand say you don't want to get on a personal nature with your employees. I'm sorry, man, but that is lame, and it isn't true. And I can prove it over and over again with the examples that I'm telling you now. You know, for them to be able to come to me and look to me, in many cases as a father figure, someone that maybe they didn't have a great relationship with their father. So I'm there. You know, I bond that relationship with them. And I'm not going to kid you. Some of my employees, they will get offers to go work at other places once in a great while for more money. But the vast majority of them don't take it. And I've told my employees, and, I, and they'll agree that if you come interview them. By the way, my publisher just did this week. He popped in, short notice, came in, Ken uh, Dunn, uh, and he came in and he went and interviewed my people without me being in the room. And I told him, I said, fine, Brian. You know, I used to tell, you want to have such a good relationship. When I used to do the interviews, Dan, when people would come in to talk with me, and I don't do the hiring people, but when they would come in and talk with me, I, after, you know, me telling them all the good, the bad, the ugly of our company, finding out all the good, the bad, the ugly about them, I would say, okay, Dan. Here's what I want you to do now. I've told you, I want to make sure you understand and accept everything I've shared with you today. I want you to get up out of that chair. I want you to go over to that door back there. I want you to open it, walk out it, shut the door, and go to anybody in this building out of 40 employees. Go to any one of them you want to and go in and ask them how I am to work for, how our management team is to work for. And without exception, I've never had them come back and say, hey, they said you guys are schmucks, I'm out of here. No, they, they said, yes, I love what I heard, you know, and that's one of the things my publisher said to me. He actually was up here at the beach house. He came up and stayed here with us a little bit the other night after he came into town. We came over, we sat on these rocking chairs, and he looked at the same thing, you know, I'm, I'm looking at out here, you know, as we talk, and we sat here rocking these rocking chairs, you know. But uh, he totally understood. He said, I, I read your book, Dave. Just like you have, Dan. He said, I want to make sure you were the real deal. He said, I don't usually go to my office, houses and businesses. He said, but I read it, and a lot of it sounds like hype, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't. So he came in, and he interviewed my people, which I was ecstatic that he did it. You know, and I didn't pay him. He came on of his own, you know. But, I mean, he found what he wanted to find out. So, bottom line, uh, building that relationship, that book club, it just knocks down the walls of resistance, and uh, we are truly a team.